Excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. It is a dreary winter night, a dreary January night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Monday. We are back to work. It is January 2nd, 2023. So the little dog and I, we have been in for the first time in our lives in the big city of Buffalo, New York today, which seems to be pretty much dug out of the snow. So I'm just now getting around to uh, today's Chronicle of the Collapse. So it has been a while since I have checked in with my friends, or maybe it's my enemies, I don't know, over there at oilprice.com. For those of you new to the show, I like to check in periodically with this website called oilprice.com which is actually catered toward fossil fuel investors. But it actually is one of the best sources of information out there. Uh, obviously, they have a little bit of an editorial slant, but trying to work around that, at least you don't have to deal too much with the apocaloptimist quite as bad as you do somewhere. So, all right, and I'm assuming the uh, oil men are cheering on their <coughs> number one headline, which you've seen in a, the mainstream media today as well. <coughs> Exxon and Chevron set for record 100 billion dollars in profits in 2022. Yes, the surge in oil and gas prices will translate into record high 2022 earnings for the two U.S. super majors, Exxon Mobil and Chevron with their combined yearly profits hitting nearly $100 billion. The two oil and gas giants benefited hmm, from the soaring prices of oil and gas following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, there you go. Extreme volatility and frequent surges above $100 per barrel helped oil firms, including the biggest American integrated companies. Do you think so? There you go. The yearly earnings for Exxon, Mobil, and Chevron are also expected to be at record highs. Exxon is to report a record of as much as $56 billion in profit for 22, while Chevron's earnings are projected to exceed $37 billion, also a record high. There you go. Good for people investing in ExxonMobil and Chevron. So we're going to go from, uh, it's called oilprice.com, but, you know, they're covering articles for anybody investing in, en in energy sources. All right, we're going to go from oil to coal. You know, all of these rumors about the death of King Coal which I'm pretty sure hit a record uh, last year. So what is the prediction for coal this year? Coal demand to remain robust in 2023. Huh. So these are the takeaways. According to the IE, that's the International Energy Agency's coal 22 report, coal demand was expected to increase 
by 1.2% in 2022, hitting an all-time high and surpassing 8 billion tons of coal burned, you know, last year in 2022 for the first time in history. There you go. Uh, even if Europe is able to reduce its reliance on coal by 2025, demand for the energy source in Asia looks set to grow for years to come. Okay. Despite bold climate pledges from a plethora of major world powers, it seems that many are unable to break their addiction to coal as consumption is, hit, is set to hit an all-time high once again. Several countries have launched climate strategies that include the phasing out of coal production and use over the coming decades. However, with gas shortages and a long road to getting enough renewable energy operations running to meet global demand, many continue to rely on coal for power and industry. Why coal is expected to decrease sometime in the long term to be replaced by natural gas and renewable alternatives, demand for coal is, some, is set to remain strong in 2023. Uh, this month, the International Energy Agency report suggested that coal consumption is expected to hit, yet again, a new all-time high and remain stable through at, well, at least 2025 unless the transition to cleaner alternative speeds up. Okay, from oil to coal to electric cars. You know, all of this bad press that Elon Musk is getting <clears throat> from the lefties. I was had some ridiculous notion that uh, that Teslas, you know, the automobiles. They're getting all of this bad press where you can't start them in cold weather or they run about a hundred miles in cold weather. All of this crap about Elon Musk, you know, being a fascist. I think, I think I recall hearing that Elon Musk is a fascist somewhere. Who said that recently? Anyway, I guess all the bad press is just washing right over Tesla Corporation as Tesla deliver, delivers record number of vehicles in fourth quarter. There you go. In a press release put out today, Tesla announced it had delivered a record 405,278 vehicles for the last quarter of 2022. The number marks a record for the company. However, despite the record, the numbers come in below most Wall Street estimates who were looking for 420,000. In 2022, vehicle deliveries grew 40% year-on-year to 1.31 million, the company's press release says. There you go. Uh, good 
for Tesla. So we've got, uh, let's see. What do we already have in the first three stories? We have Exxon, Exxon Mobil and Chevron looking at record profits. We see coal consumption breaking all records last year, expecting to break new records this year. We see Tesla delivering a record amount of vehicles last year. It's just all coming up roses for the Planet Eaters. All right. I'm surprised to see here in the middle of uh, oilprice.com Extinction Rebellion showing up. Extinction Rebellion to end disruptive stunts for now. <clears throat> the UK arm of Extinction Rebellion will temporarily halt its tactics of disrupting public life and transportation with roadblocks and other high-profile protests, the environmental group said on New Year's Day. In a statement titled, We Quit, Extinction Rebellion said that its New Year's resolution, quote, is to halt our tactics of public dis disruption. Instead, we call on everyone to help us disrupt our corrupt government, close quote. And there you go. Um, what's going on? It doesn't really talk about stop oil in here. So, I don't know what that's all about. Uh, as long as we're over there in the UK, we have talked about oil, we have talked about coal, we have talked about electric vehicles. So, what is going on with nuclear fuel at the opening bell of 2023? UK funds local nuclear fuel production to cut dependence on Russia. On Monday, today, <clears throat> the UK government opened a nuclear fuel fund designed to encourage the use of UK produced nuclear fuel as the country moves to fulfill its G7 commitment to diversify uranium and nuclear fuel production capacity away from Russia. All right, the UK will allocate $90 million in government funding in a bid to support the development of of alternatives to Russian fuel supply and strengthen UK energy security. Um, it has the ambition to deploy up to 24 gigawatts of nuclear power by the year 2050, which they say should cover about 25% of the UK's projected electricity demand then. There you go. Uh, so everything is just, it, it, the future is so bright for energy investors, but of course the number one. I, I think oilprice.com is getting ready to change its name in a few years to lithiumprice.com because obviously the new king of the hill 
would be lithium. And and I you know I've been saying for years, it's uh, it is quite easy to make money off the collapse of a planet. And all joking aside, if I were investing in the collapse of a planet, if I wanted to make money in the 2020s and 2030s, if I were a young man, instead of an old fart, uh, an old skeleton with his game over t-shirt, uh, I would be investing in lithium mining is where my money would be going so I could get out there and enjoy it while I still can on the money to be made by investing in lithium mining. So what's going on with lithium mining at the opening bell of 2023? Top lithium miner expects an extended price rally. Do you think so? Lithium prices will likely remain elevated for years to come despite plans for a ramp up in supply. The world's biggest miner of the battery metal, Albemarle, uh, told the Financial Times today, uh, according to the company's head of lithium, Eric Norris, the reason for the extended lithium price rally would be a fundamental transformation of the lithium market. Quote, one of the reasons that we see things being so tight is just the market is fundamentally different. Uh, talking about today, the lithium market is growing at 200,000 tons per year, almost the full size of what the market was back then, meaning less than three years ago. Um, yet, even at such growth rates, there will not be enough lithium to satisfy the projected demand for the metal, which is crucial for electric vehicle batteries. And based on the latest EV sales and projected sales numbers, you know, looking at Tesla and others, there is not enough lithium being produced now, and there will not be for a while yet, as demand for lithium grows faster than supply. Because of this imbalance, some observers are forecasting a super cycle for battery metals. There you go. Uh, but that's far from certain because of rising prices for not just lithium, but for many other metals. Um, there you go. Uh, now Goldman Sachs is actually uh, not agreeing. According to Goldman Sachs, uh, this is their prediction, and I have no idea why Goldman Sachs uh, sees lithium, quote, hitting $80,000 per ton this year. Then lithium prices will drop to $11,000 by 2024 because of EV overproduction in China and the startup of new mines. So I don't know, see you believe. Uh, I am with Albemarle. Uh, I think Goldman Sachs is being completely clueless, claiming that lithium, the price of lithium is gonna collapse 
from eighty thousand to eleven thousand dollars. No way. But we're gonna wind up in uh, the country of Peru, looking at the oil industry in Peru, and uh, at the opening bell of 2023. So for all you newcomers, I just uh, want to let you know if you have any interest in reading anything I have ever written. I wrote a book, good Lord, 14 years ago now. I spent several months down in the Peruvian Amazon looking at the oil and gas uh, industry, these uh, oil and gas drillers from Texas down there in an Amazon Indian reserve. Uh, you can find it on Barnes and Noble, I believe, or uh, uh, it's published. It's an ebook on Lulu. The name of the book is Peruvian Plunge. Now it is, the author's name is not Sam Mitchell. It is some weird name. Uh, for some reason, uh, the author of the, my book on the Peruvian oil, well, the American oil industry in Peru, uh, is by some uh, nom de plume, Hambone Little Tail. But uh, you can find it on, I think it's about five bucks. Anyway, this gets right to the point. Peru's oil industry is an environmental disaster. <clears throat> For nearly three decades, Peru's oil industry has seen oil spills and pipeline leaks across the country's Amazon Basin and coastline. <clears throat> the environmental disasters are adding to the perception that Peru's government is unwilling to address the needs of communities in the Amazon. Huh, where have I heard this story before? I think I was writing this book 14 years ago. When the government, with the government once again in crisis and no sign of effective regulation on the horizon, there is little respite ahead for the country's oil industry. Oil spills remain a hazard in a country where environmental protection, especially of the Amazon rainforest has not been a significant government priority for decades. Those spills and other environmentally damaging incidents are fueling community anger with indigenous peoples claiming they are wreaking damage to their ancestral lands. Uh, according to a report from Oxfam, Oxfam and Peru's National Coordinator for Human Rights, between 1997 and 2021, there have been over a thousand oil spills in Peru, with 566 in the Amazon and 404 on the coast. Uh, anyway, I think we get it. The more things change, the more things stay the same. So, uh, anyway. One more reason to kiss goodbye to the Amazon rainforest, but if you want to look at what that looks like on the ground, Peruvian plunge, and uh, get an insider's take on it. Right, little dog. 
But I gotta wrap this up, guys. It is already nine o'clock at night and getting close to my bedtime. So, uh, get out there and uh, make money on the collapse of a planet while you still can before it is game over. I would like to thank Doomer Chick Katie for all of these nice new uh, t-shirts. Game over. Rant over. Bye, guys.